Hello everybody, David Hedge here, and today we're taking a look at a game that we're excited to play at Gen Con 2019. We're qualified, or we're entered, in three national qualifiers for the event, see if we can get qualified for the nationals on Saturday. The game is Dice Throne from Roxley Games, and if you like Yahtzee, and if you like combat, this is the game for you. So let's get to the table and see what the game is all about. Alright, this is Dice Throne. We're using the... Uh, the Season 2, which is an amazing season. You have all sorts of cool things here. You have a samurai, you have an artificer, you have a, uh, a gunslinger, cursed pirate, a valkyrie, a vampire, a tactician, and a huntress. So in this, there's a whole lot of stuff going on in this game, and this is going to be amazing. So the first one's really good as well. It was the base, like some basic characters, uh, the most... Um, intuitive of the bunch was a monk. This one we're going to show you with the tactician. Uh, and as you can see, there's a little bit of stuff going on. You got the board here, you have their dice, you have their special abilities right here for this one, gives you special tokens. We'll go over that in a little bit. But on the back here, you give a little bit of background about the character, you have the FAQ about the character as well, but you will also see a uh, complexity level, which I think is pretty cool with this game, because with this guy, he's a complexity level of 5, which means there's going to be some stuff to keep up with, and he's one of those characters where if you've been playing a little bit, he'll be a good one to try out. And in case you ever wonder, you have all the different components for him, uh, what's supposed to come in the box. Now, with this, it comes in a, a huge box set. I'll actually show it here to you. This came in like a huge, huge box uh, with all eight of the characters in the game. But you can buy a one-on-one -on -one set, like a two-player starter set, from uh, anywhere online or anywhere in a local game store near you for about 20 25 bucks, And it's a great game to play. So all it is is that you have basically the objective of the game is to take your opponent's health, like right here, uh, to zero. And in a one-on-one -on -one game, it starts out at 50 health. There's also like two-on-two, two, uh, there is free-for-all different formats and you can adjust this accordingly and each player usually starts out with 50 life and before, I know what you're thinking the style goes way above 50 and that's for the different formats of the game uh, during the game you can heal this life and you can actually go 10 above your starting health so that's pretty cool also in the game you have combat points which lets you play different cards and we'll go over that uh, the combat points, at the beginning of the game, you start at two combat points. Now, there is what's called an income step, or an income phase, where you gain a point and draw a card, but on the first turn, you skip that. So it's similar to magic on that aspect. Uh, then you have the different cards you can play during the game. Uh, and you'll see, like, there's different symbols that let you know exactly when to play the cards. And also, if you need it, cool little turn reference thing for you. So, to play the game, let's go with the first one, which is the unkeep step. Uh, the upkeep step, you res uh, resolve applicable status effects, which are like these tokens here. And we'll go over that shortly. Uh, so let's say this is the first turn, we don't have to worry about that. The income step, you gain a combat point and then you gain, draw one card from your deck. Uh, in this case, we're going to save the first player, so we don't need to do that. Uh, the main phase, you can play ability upgrades, you can play main action cards, and you can sell cards, which uh, for gain one point per card. There's a hand limit of six, so at the beginning of the game you start with four cards. And say if there's a card you want to play, which the cost of the cards are right here in the corner, so say for example flank two, which is an upgrade ability, cost two, you would have to use your combat points to play that. Now there's different... Uh, phases to play these cards in. So like the M is basically your main phase. Then you have the ones with dice here. You use those during your next phase, which is your roll dice phase, your roll phase. And there's ones that have exclamation points on that let you play them whenever you want, no matter if it's the roll phase or the main phase. So let's say beginning of the main phase, we have, all right, so we have status effects, which removes all status effects tokens from a chosen player don't have any right now but we do have this to upgrade our flank so we have two combat points we can spend so what we're going to do is that we're going to take this down to zero went the wrong way there we go 
and we find the flank ability on our character board and we go to flank 2 which and upgrades it now with this we now go to the roll phase in the roll phase you roll these five gorgeous looking dice you may notice that there's numbers and there's also symbols as well so like this one you have the metal and a six you also have a flag which is on the four and the five and then you have a sword which is on one through three the most common one and this is where the Yahtzee part comes in ladies and gentlemen so you just roll and then you decide what you want to keep now in the game there's all sorts of different things you can choose so for example you have a saber strike gets bigger with each sword that you apply to it you have to have at least three swords uh, you have profiteer you have strategic approach all these different options that you can choose from there's also ones that let you do things whether if you have a small straight a large straight and if you get four of a kind and then each character has the ultimate right here if you roll all sixes all of your one of uh, symbol on your die you get to do an ultimate combat move and there's no way of blocking it so that's pretty cool so let's say for right now we have three sabers let's go for a saber strike so we roll the three and we roll two more we have another sword and well we got four swords so we take a look and see what we can do in this case we have four swords they will deal five damage to our opponent so that's during the offense roll phase then you have the targeting roll phase which basically you target a player if there's more than two players so in a one-on-one -on -one, you skip over that phase and then you have the defensive role phase and defensive role phase each character has a little green spot right here and it tells you how many you get to roll so for the tactician you roll four and it tells you for every two swords you deal a damage back so you get to parry the attack uh, if you roll and uh, you prevent one for each banner uh, for each flag that you roll and you gain one uh, tactical advantage for each metal you roll. Now, each character is going to be entirely different on what they can do with their uh, defense rolls. So with the tactician, uh, with his ability, he focuses on a lot of different things. So let's take a look at this, because this is where it's a little bit more intricate. So for this character, he has four different things. He has tactical advantage, which stack limit is five, which means you can only have five of that token at any given time. And uh, a player with these tokens may spend them at any time for a variety of effects, and you get to do so many different things. Like if you have one token, you can use that one token to gain a one combat point. You can use a token to reroll one die. You can use three tokens to draw a card. Three tokens to inflict targeted, which we'll go over that one. Uh, four to gain protection and four to transfer one status effect to another player uh, This may only be done during the main phase That's the only time that you have to have a limitation of when you can use his tactical advantage tokens And with this guy there's so many different options and that's the reason why he's a level five because there's so many different things You have to keep up with uh, Next you have constrict uh, which constrict uh, you spend uh, combat points or lose one roll attempt. So basically for a constrict, uh, a person on their next offensive roll has to roll one fewer attempt. So you have a maximum of three, but if you are constricted, you only get to roll two times. Unless you pay a combat point. You pay a combat point, you're able to roll three, and that token goes away. And it goes away either way once you're done with that next combat roll. Uh, or next roll phase. Then you have targeted. Uh, targeted again, it's stack of one. Uh, plus two to incoming damage. So you target somebody that is going to be uh, something that will stick with that player until they can get rid of it or move it to somebody else and all your attacks deal two more damage. Now that doesn't go for defense damage, just for your attack rolls. So being able to target somebody, that means you have it out for them and you want them dead. Uh, and then finally you have protect for him which prevents half incoming damage. A player with this token may spend it to, at any time to prevent half damage being dealt. So if your opponent has a big, big move that he's trying to do, uh, your protect will basically do like only protect half damage. But taking half damage is a whole lot better than taking no damage. Alright, so let's take a look at some of the other things here. Uh, we have, for example, strategic approach. Uh, let's ship inflict constrict to somebody deal seven damage uh, but let's take a look at the big one higher ground for five sixes or five metals uh, what this does inflicts targeted inflicts constrict increased tactical advantage stack limit by one 
then gain max tactical advantage tokens and deal 12 damage. Now, the biggest thing with the ultimate attack, and I gotta read this because it's a lot. Uh, dice may be altered to prevent or uh, an ultimate. Otherwise, no action of any kind can be performed by any opponent until the ability fully completes. So, that means they don't get a defense, they don't get to use anything like protect. They can try to alter your die roll, but if they can't, that is going to be it. Now, play goes back and forth until one person is at zero. And that's it. That's the main part of the game. You have a second main phase after the roll phase, and then you have a discard phase where you discard to six cards. And the game is so simple. It's so easy. Each character is like has a different complexity of it. Uh, the tactician, like I said, is a five, but you have one that, like a barbarian who is able to just hit over and over again, just massive damage, doesn't care what kind of damage he takes. Uh, but the biggest thing, too, that sold me on this game, and I'm going to go over this real quick. So in this deluxe edition, and you'll probably find it in the other editions, too, you get this cool little tray here. So say with a samurai, you open it up, and it has all sorts of different stuff in here. So let's go ahead and open this real quick so you can see as long as I do not drop the samurai. There we go. So each one comes with a cool board that will fold out like the tactician here. You have their different tip card. Uh, shows you everything that you need to know about them. And then you have the dice, you have their cards, and then you have their combat point marker and their health counter. And that is it. Like that, It's a simple game, easy to game. If you're in the Yahtzee, if you're in the just doing damage to your opponent a lot, and if you want a game that only takes like maybe 20, 30 minutes to play, if that depends on the die rolls, then you are definitely going to want to check out Dice Throne from Roxley Games. Well, there you have it. That is Dice Throne from Roxley Games. And I got to tell you, I love this game. It's simple and easy to play. I love it. There's cards that can let you manipulate your die rolls. Uh, also, there's cards that let you upgrade your attacks and your defense throughout the game. And... It's a perfect thing if you just want to have a nice one-on-one -on -one combat game that's quick and easy to play and just throw a bunch of dice, this is the game for you. There's also the different characters you can choose from. Some characters are easy, like the Barbarian, because all he wants to do is just hit things hard and get through quickly with any task that's in his way. To the Vampire and the uh, Cursed Pirate. The Cursed Pirate, you can actually collect Cursed Coins to turn her over to her Cursed Side. While the vampire just wants to start uh, performing exsanguination, start like bleeding their opponent out little by little throughout the game. And I really love this game. Great job from Roxley Games. And I cannot wait to play this in a tournament setting at Gen Con 2019. And hopefully when I come back and do a video for a recap of Gen Con, you'll see like a little statue right here, a little trophy from the game. And if not, it's still going to be a whole lot of fun to do. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video. As always, click the bell above so you never miss an upload. You can go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Two Hedges Smash Gaming so you can keep up to date with all the stuff that we're doing and about board game and card game news from all across the internet. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video. And until next time, take care.